did you know you could look lean in the mirror, see some of your abs, and still be carrying the most dangerous type of fat for your health? I am talking about visceral fat. This is not the belly fat you can grab or pinch, it is the fat hidden deep inside of your abdomen and wrapped around your organs. If you have too much of it, it can put you at serious health risk and even make it harder to build muscle or get a lean physique. Research shows that 1 in 5 people with a healthy body weight carry too much visceral fat putting them at a higher risk for diabetes, heart disease, and fatty liver, even though they look healthy outside. The good news, there are powerful science-based strategies we can use to reduce visceral fat. And now we'll discuss that in today's video. Stick around because by the end of this video, you will know what works, what doesn't, and how to take action. First, what exactly is visceral fat? You have two main types of body fat, subcutaneous fat, this is the fat under your skin, that's the stuff you can pinch. And you also have visceral fat. This is fat that surrounds your liver, pancreas and intestines. This is fat you cannot really see or pinch, it is invisible to the naked eye, which makes it dangerous. You can be what many people call thin on the outside and still have a dangerous amount of fat on the inside. There's even a medical term for this called visceral obesity. It is like having a hidden risk inside your belly. Compared to the subcutaneous fat you can actually pinch, Visceral fat is more strongly linked to insulin resistance and metabolic problems. Also, when you gain visceral fat cells, they start producing a range of hormones and they increase inflammation in the body. Important anabolic hormones like testosterone could be negatively impacted by visceral fat. And you may also feel more bloated because of the inflammation when you have more visceral fat. But the nice thing is, you have control. Visceral fat is very responsive to lifestyle change. So with the right strategies, you can shrink the fat around your organs faster than usual. Now that you understand the concept of visceral fat, let's get to the root of the problem. Because the reason visceral fat is common these days is not just because we eat too much in these modern times. A lot has to do with lifestyle variables as well. If we look at the scientific literature, we see four main causes that are responsible for gaining excess visceral fat. The first culprit is excessive stress. We live in a fast-paced world where many people feel like they have to be on 24-7. This results in elevated levels of their hormone cortisol. If cortisol is constantly elevated, it has an impact on the body, signaling it to store more fat around the midsection. This is why the term cortisol belly exists. It reflects the direct link between stress and abdominal fat deposits. Now this is not to say that all stress is bad. To achieve greatness in any endeavor of life, you will have to endure some stress. But worrying too much and not having enough recovery will result in stress levels that are constantly elevated and this promotes visceral fat gain. The second cause is having poor sleep. In a 2023 study, having just two weeks of sleep restriction caused an increase in visceral fat in healthy young adults. Just sleeping two weeks for four hours per night already was a problem for visceral fat. The interesting thing about this study is that subcutaneous fat, so the fat you can see and pinch, did not increase much. Most of the fat gain that happens when you lose sleep tends to be around the organs. The third variable impacting visceral fat is alcohol intake. For some people, an unhealthy way they deal with stress or a lack of sleep is by having a drink at night. But alcohol contains a byproduct known as acetate, which is toxic. Acetate causes your body to temporarily block fat burning, so the calories you get from alcohol are more likely to be stored as fat. And what do we see in the research? Alcohol tends to specifically promote visceral fat storage, so you gain more of the dangerous fat around the organs. This is why the term beer belly also exists. The fourth and last variable causing more visceral fat gain is processed food consumption. Eating too many calories in general will promote visceral and overall body fat gain. But it seems that specifically processed foods with added sugar and trans fats increase the likelihood of you accumulating visceral fat. Eating more sugars and trans fats contribute to raising your blood glucose and insulin resistance, which signals the body to store fat, particularly in the abdominal region. So if you overeat on your calories and most of those extra calories come from sugary foods or trans fat containing foods, you are more likely to accumulate visceral fat. Okay, so we know the problem and what causes visceral fat gain. Let's now look into the solution. And this is where the science gets really exciting. Because visceral fat is a lot more responsive to lifestyle change than subcutaneous fat. The first and most powerful lifestyle tool against visceral fat is lifting weights. A large 2021 meta-analysis found that making people lift weights consistently reduces visceral fat. And here's the interesting part, even if you do not lose any weight, resistance training by itself still can be effective for reducing visceral fat. Because lifting weights changes your body composition by building metabolically active muscle mass. Muscle burns more calories at rest than body fat, so the more muscle you have, the higher your resting metabolic rate becomes. 
But it's not just lifting weights that's effective. Another meta-analysis in the Journal of Obesity Reviews found that combining cardio and resistance training has the most powerful effect on visceral fat loss. And again, in this study, they found that you can lose visceral fat without even having to lose weight if you have a more active lifestyle. Of course, the best results are made when you combine a calorie deficit with a consistent training plan. But it is motivating to see that just training alone has a positive impact. A good example would be doing 3 days of lifting weights and 1-2 to two days of cardio per week. I personally lift weights 4 times per week now, while having one weekly cardio session for the health benefits. My online coaching client class from Germany had a similar approach. And he lost a ton of body fat while building muscle, but most importantly, his visceral fat and overall health markers are much better now. If you also want personalized guidance in your fitness journey to build muscle, lose fat and improve your longevity, apply to my private one-on-one -on -one online coaching service. I will personally design your training and nutrition approach while holding you accountable throughout the week. Visit the link in my description to apply and we can set up a call to discuss your goals and get the process started. Next to training, you can also structure your nutrition in a certain way to promote visceral fat loss. The good news is that any calorie deficit works. Whether it's from low-fat, low-carb dieting, intermittent fasting, they all work as long as you are in a consistent calorie deficit. So you have flexibility. But there are two nutrition tips I want to give you to burn specifically that visceral fat. First, incorporate more fiber into your nutrition. This 10-year study found that for every 10 gram increase in your fiber intake per day, visceral fat reduced by 3.7%. To put that into perspective, that's just incorporating one extra cup of cream peas and two small apples in a day, and you'll notice a visceral fat loss benefit. Fiber works by slowing digestion, making you feel full, and promoting a more healthy gut microbiome, which reduces the kind of inflammation that contributes to visceral fat storage. You can find fiber in foods like oats, apples, lentils, and beans. Secondly, limit your consumption of fructose-sweetened beverages. One fascinating study had the participants drink either fructose-sweetened beverages or glucose-sweetened beverages. Both groups gained weight from the excess sugar, but only the fructose group gained visceral fat. That means beverages with high fructose corn syrup seem to feed visceral fat directly. So, if you want to reduce visceral fat, cutting out soda and sugary drinks should be a priority. In general, a Mediterranean-style diet combined with a calorie deficit seems to work well for reducing visceral fat, as supported by this powerful 2022 study. A Mediterranean-style diet combined with a calorie deficit resulted in 40% more visceral fat loss than a typical low-fat diet. With a Mediterranean diet, think about having more monounsaturated fats and polyphenol-rich foods like olives, walnuts, leafy greens, tomatoes, seafood, and berries. This Mediterranean eating style reduces inflammation and improves insulin sensitivity, all contributing to better visceral fat loss. Of course, next to the training and nutrition methods I described just now to reduce visceral fat, also pay attention to managing your stress, improving your sleep, and reducing alcohol intake. If you are in a calorie deficit, lift weights at least three times per week, do a bit of cardio, mostly eat whole foods with a focus on enough fiber and manage stress, you are well on your way to reduce visceral fat. If you want a proven, personalized roadmap to lose visceral fat and finally feel confident in your body, my one-on-one -on -one private online coaching service gives you a customized plan based on your lifestyle, weekly guidance and accountability, so you can stop guessing and start transforming your body like all of my other clients. Apply through the link in my description and let's make your goals happen together. For now, that's all for today's video. I hope you have a better understanding on how you can manage your training and nutrition for better visceral fat loss. Here above, I have an awesome new video for you, so go ahead and check that out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.